continue our reading in Revelation chapter 2 today. Now, the book of Revelation says a lot. There's a lot of unique things. But what I really like about it is the way that it reveals who Jesus is and what it looks like to follow him. So this month, as we look through the book of Revelation, let's ask ourselves, what are we seeing of Jesus? And how is he calling us to follow him in the real world situations in which we find ourselves. As an added challenge this month as we read the book of Revelation, we may want to apply those principles of Bible study that we used in a community groups earlier this year. In case you're a little rusty on those or in case you didn't get to use those, we basically just asked four questions. Uh, every time we read a passage of the Bible, we asked these four questions. What, so what, say what, and now what? Uh, for the what question, that's where we just, very simply, we said, what does the text say? And we would write down and observe facts, details, people, places. Uh, just we observed what the text actually says. And then we asked the question, so what? As in, in light of the facts that we see, are there any big principles or promises that we can hold on to? Are there uh, themes or lessons that we should be observing? So that's the so what. And then from there, we moved into say what, where we opened ourselves up to the Spirit of God. And we said, God, what are you saying to me? What are you saying to us? And that's where we discern God's voice speaking to us through his word. And then the fourth one of, and now what? That's where we prayerfully commit ourselves to living out whatever God's word says. So as you read through this book of Revelation, ask yourselves those questions. What, so what, say what, and now what? So for example, in chapter two and chapter three, you could look at what is God saying to these different churches? Maybe you could put them into categories of what are common things he says to all of the churches, and then what are unique things he's saying to each of these churches, and then look for big themes and principles and ideas that we might learn from that. And then to, to meditate and reflect, okay, so what would God be saying to me in light of this? And then before finishing that time of prayer and study, to seek the discernment and to commit to living out some word that you've gotten from that. For me, as I read through chapter two, what stood out to me is that Jesus is my king and he's my pastor because he has power and he has authority. In the way that Jesus is presented in chapter two, he is definitely a king. He is the one who has power. He uh, was the word that spoke the world into existence in his earthly ministry with just a word he could command the winds and the waves. Even death itself had to bend to his will. Jesus is a king and Jesus has power. And so my response is to follow him because he is my king and he has power. But Jesus also has authority because he is the good shepherd. He is the pastor to my soul because as the pastor as the shepherd of my soul he cares for me he comforts me he knows me any place he calls me to go is one that he has already been he is the one whom i willingly submit my life to because he was the one who willingly laid down his life for me jesus has authority and so I follow him as the shepherd of my soul and he has power because he is the king of the universe. And so when I read through this chapter, I am moved by the fact that he is my king and he is my shepherd. Uh, I'm also moved in the specific things he says to these churches, but I'll just point out what he says to the church in Ephesus. I love the way that he begins by commenting on saying that he sees their deeds and their hard work and their perseverance. He lets them know that he is aware of everything they've done and everything they've endured. But in, in light of all of that, he still calls them out on something that needs to change. He says that they have forsaken their first love. Now, in saying that they've forsaken their first love, that could mean that they have forgotten or left behind the way that they loved when they first believed. Or it could also mean that they deprioritized loving God and loving others, which should be the first and foremost priority to them. 
And so when we read this message to the, the church uh, in Ephesus, it shows how to follow Jesus in uncertain times. And it means that we love with our actions and with our hearts. It means that we love him fully. Uh, we should be opening ourselves up right now as we read this to how can we follow Jesus in this way? And so as we close, just ask ourselves this question. Do we remember what it was like when we first believed? Do we remember the ways that uh, God opened up our hearts to love him and to love others in a powerful and profound way? Because this is the command that should be first and foremost, to love, to love God and to love others. And so today, let us remember our first love.